Matthew. 25. Verse. 14. The parable of the talents. I'm sorry. Apparently, what we have here is the parable of the talent. Begin again. Again. Matthew. 25. Verse. 14. Jesus told a story. About. A man. Who had. Three servants. For the sake of argument. Fred. Ted. And Julian Potterton Brown. Now, Ted was smarter than Fred. But Fred was bigger than Ted. Ted had a head to earn him his bread. Which cannot be said for Fred. But Fred often said, I don't have Ted, Zed. I manage with muscles instead. Now, Julian Potterton Brown was the odd one out. But this didn't deter him. After all, I'm frightfully well bred, he said. I'm greasier than Ted, he said. I'm lazier than Fred, he said. And I don't rhyme with either of them. One day, their employer summoned them to his office. Knock, knock. Come in. Now, listen, you three. Fred, Ted and Julian, whatever your name is. Potterton Brown. Granted. Before I go away on my journey. I wish to give you each some money to look after. Form a queue, form a queue. Five talents for Fred. Two talents for Ted. And one talent for Julian. So he waved goodbye. He took his toothbrush. Took his hat. Took his leave. Took his coat. Oops, and left. And left. <laughs> now, Fred had £2,500. Ted had £1,000. Julian had £500. But what were they going to do with it? Fred had a flair for gardening and fancied growing some vegetables. Ted had a flair for marketing and fancied his chances in business. Julian had flares and fancied himself. Fred rolled up his sleeves, grabbed all his money, and blew the whole lot on a spade, a garden shed, a plot of land, a bag of bulbs, an hose pipe, and a pair of wellies. Well, it's not often that you... Oh, please. Sorry. Ted surveyed the market very carefully. Bided his time. Picked his moment. Got his wallet. And laid all his money on 20... Second-hand camels. He considered the problems, the pitfalls, the dangers that lay ahead, the risks of losing everything. And so Julian used his intelligence. He thought. He planned. He schemed. He did. Nothing. Nothing. But he was jolly careful with his money. He wrapped it up in a silk handkerchief. On a velvet cushion. In a little box. And hid it under the floorboards. And then... A few years later... Knock, knock. Who's there? Who do you think? The master. The master. Quick, quick, form a queue, form a queue. And the master called each man to account for the money he had entrusted to him. Who's first? 
Well, it's not as much as I'd hoped, Master. Carrot's got a nasty attack of the camel bites. Never mind that. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have doubled the money I gave you. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Next! Yeah, well, uh, second-hand camels, sold a few, bought a few, crashed a few, but you can't win them all, so here you are. servant. You too have doubled the money I gave you. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Next! <coughs> Master! My Lord! Master! Knowing you to be a hard man, etc., etc. Reaping where you did not sow. Gathering where you did not winnow. Ploughing where you did not plough, and so on. And so forth. I was afraid and hid the money. I remain your obedient servant, Julian What? Poss you did nothing? You're all words. You're all talk. All that I gave you has not grown one inch. Take away the talent and give it to the man who has ten. And take this wicked servant and cast him out into outer darkness. Don't be deceived. Put everything that God has given you to good use. For one day you will have to give an account of your life to him. <laughs> <laughs> 